I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast talking all about how do you know when it is time for you to go to IVF. Many times when you have DOR, so diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency, low AMH, high FSH, you may have been told that IVF or donor eggs are your only option. So uh, you get that, that diagnosis, you go straight to the REI, and they, you get on the train for IVF. But how do you really know that is the next step for you? Has anybody stopped to look at your health? And I know most people that come to see us, they've already made some changes to their diet and lifestyle. This is not your first kick of this. You've already made some changes, but are they targeted changes? And do you have the data in front of you to make an informed decision to see if IVF is right for you. So today we're going to talk about how to look for the red flags, what could be missed, what your doctor is not telling you, and how to know for sure if IVF is right for you right now. Let's go. So today we're going to be giving you some tips to dig deeper as to why you may be struggling to have your baby. And so typically after working with hundreds of people, we've worked with people that either are told donor eggs are their only option. They may have tried naturally for two years. They may have already had failed IUI or IUIs or failed IVF or IVFs. Um, They may have had miscarriage or or repeat miscarriage. So our thing is we're not anti-IVF, we're pro-health. So you can't skip the health. We sometimes we're, we're told in conventional medicine, that the fast track to this is going straight to IVF. The fast track is working on your health. You'll either get pregnant naturally, or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, you'll improve your chances of it working. And so this is not a quick fix or some magic p- pill, but in a very short period of time. So it takes 90 days for, for the egg to renew itself. The life cycle, of the sperm is 70 to 80 days. So in a very short period of time, you can make massive changes to your health, your reproductive health, and improve your chances of having your baby. So I know you've been told, you know, especially if you have a low AMH and or high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency, that, you know, IVF is your next step. Donor eggs are your next step. And you may be down that road of planning on what it is you need to do. We need to, we, we need to work right now on our health. As I say, in a short period of time, you see massive change. So I'm going to give you some clues here. Um, sometimes people come to us and say, you know what, I'm completely healthy. I feel great. Um, They may have, as we dig deeper, we can actually see that there are issues, you know, uh, with their health, even though you may feel fine and present, that was me. I was diagnosed with with POI at 28, had both my kids with donor eggs. Not until years later did I discover all these different health issues from bladder infections to chronic sinus infections, to yeast infections, to dandruff, to, to vertigo, to toenail infections, to getting every cold and flu. But even at that time, strangely enough, I actually would have, if I had to check out a a questionnaire saying, Sarah, how's your health? I would have said, it's excellent. Um, Well, no, it wasn't because I had all these different health issues. And sometimes we may not even know that these uh, seemingly unrelated health issues are related to our fertility. So um, I wanted to give you some some clues to dig deeper um, as we focus on this. And we're using functional lab testing um, so our, it's basically like when I was um, diagnosed with POI 25 years ago, 25 years later, it's the same approach in conventional medicine, you know, with POI or diminished ovarian reserve, low AMH and high FSH, you had better rush to the fertility clinic. You maybe you should do an aggressive IVF, or maybe that's too much. And you should do, you know, a, a low, a lower protocol, um, you know, the, all sorts of this, all sorts of uh, recommendations. And then no one stops to say, well, wait a minute. Why do you have this diagnosis and what's going on with your health? And so for me, you know, years later discovered food sensitivities and gut infections and, and chronic stress was, was a big one. And I didn't even, I wouldn't even have said I was stressed. I thought I was totally fine. Obviously I was stressed (laughs) looking back just because mentally you can, you know, you can still cope. Doesn't mean your body is coping well. So, um, Let's dig into these um, these things here. So if you're dealing with any of this, this is a clue for you to dig deeper, work on your health. Because we see people that have this, I've had people like 16 IVFs, 20 IVFs. Like it's just insane as to what's going on out there. Spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. No one has looked at the health or they might have, you know, they, I shouldn't say no one has done anything. Most people that come to see us, they have made some changes. They probably thrown out the plastics, they maybe dabbled in gluten-free. 
They, um, you know, they've maybe done some acupuncture. So they've, they've done something, you know, it's not about just like, okay, I've only done IVF. Most people have, you know, tried to work on their stress, but not in a very targeted manner. It's just sort of you doing those generalized recommendations, reading off a blog, podcast, um, you know, a book and, and following these recommendations, but it's not working for them. So we need to take a very target approach and we use functional lab testing, so looking at food sensitivity testing, using blood stool testing, looking at the DNA of the stool, genetic testing, so we can really personalize that diet, lifestyle, and uh, supplement recommendations. And then also looking at your blood chemistry, uh, making sure they're at optimal levels. Many times we're told they're normal, but are they optimal? And then also looking at the semen analysis. And then um, our, our, our fertility mindset coaches are really going to help you work on that stress piece to get you out of that fight or flight into the parasympathetic so the body knows it's safe to have your baby. So we really believe in that mind, body, spirit approach. And all through the podcast, I've been doing this podcast now for many years. We're coming up to six years in January that I have been talking about this stuff. Um, to have you see this, you know, look at things completely differently and know that it's extremely empowering. And you hire the team around you from the REI to the OBGYN to the functional medicine physician to the functional nutrition practitioner, acupuncturist, but you're in the center. You don't have people all at once, but you, you bring them in um, as you see fit. But you're, you're the conductor of your own healing and you know your body best. A lot of times we go to the REI and they're like, they don't even listen to you. You're just a number. And you're like, wait a minute, there's, there's a problem, blah, 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 blah. And they just say, you know, we're going to do the same protocol that we did last time. We'll just keep doing the same protocol. Well, has anyone stopped to look at your health? And so um, today we're going to give you some, some tips on that. So the first thing we see is people that have been on long-term hormonal birth control, which then can predispose you to gut infections and food sensitivities and maybe not being able to absorb all your nutrients. And many times people were put on the pill, not for prevention, most people that I speak to, it was because they had heavy periods, they had acne, they had irregular periods. And someone's like, okay, let's go to the doctor see what they say. And lo and behold, they say, take the pill. A Band-Aid approach may regu- like falsely regulates your period, um, but it's not getting to the root of, of why it was heavy, irregular to begin with. And then you go off the pill and not to say everyone that goes off the pill has infertility. People that we work with, you know, the cycle doesn't come back or it's still irregular. You're still dealing with these issues and no one's dug deeper. So if you were on the pill, we see people being on the pill for 10, 15, 20 years coming off and then trying to conceive and all these things have been massed along the way. And sometimes people can go on the pill. It doesn't even agree with them. You can make, you can make you feel anxious or depressed. And then we go on medication for anti-anxiety and depression medication. And we're chasing all these symptoms and it actually was the pill. And then all the other health issues that, 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 that we had along with that. So if you've been on the pill that can then predispose you to the gut infections, food sensitivities, and not absorbing all those nutrients. And you need all these nutrients to then help prepare for your baby. Um, the next one is an undetected autoimmune disease. So um, we're not diagnosing here, but we see many times people, they may have celiac. They didn't know about it. You're chasing symptoms around. Maybe you've got, you know, anemia or you've got, um, um, you know, digestive issues and you're chasing around these symptoms. You don't know when you're struggling to conceive. Is it celiac? Um, and then once we, and it's not just about taking out gluten, there's cross reactors too with that. So you can take out gluten and you can still be intolerant to oats and corn and dairy and it's the cross reactors. And you've got a whole issues going on with, you know, with your gut, as you heal your gut, you can bring most of those foods back in. Um, and I've seen many people that they're going through IVF. It's failed multiple times. And they say, Oh, by the way, yes, I've got an autoimmune disease. I've got celiac. I've got Hashimoto's. I've got rheumatoid um, uh, arthritis. MS, lupus, um, some autoimmune disease going on. And, and then in conventional medicine, you know, you're given medication for that to manage it. Or maybe you've had, you know, ulcerative colitis. We see that too, or Crohn's where, Hey, there's been no flare up for years, but is there still underlying inflammation in your body? We see that a lot. And so even though you haven't had a flare up, you maybe are in remission. Why, why is it not working? And as we start to further reduce all the, the, the stress and pressure on the body from a food sensitivity, a gut infection, environmental toxins, the mental emotional stress, then the body, the reproductive system comes back online. So 
either an undetected autoimmune disease or you already know you have an autoimmune disease. And one autoimmune disease can then predispose you for a second autoimmune disease. So we see that with people as well. And so conventional medicine and autoimmune disease is, is just not the way to go. Like they're going to be giving you medication and just managing the symptoms, not getting to the root of, of why the underlying healing opportunity of why it's there in the first place. So autoimmune disease, huge killer to dig into. Food sensitivities. I've done many podcast episodes on food sensitivities. This is not you going in this very restrictive diet for years and years. It's it's figuring out which what are the foods that are triggering inflammation in your body. You take them out for a short period of time using food sensitivity testing, and then um, you take them out for sixty to ninety days, depending on what what's what 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 it is on your your food sensitivity test. You heal the gut along with it, and then you bring most of the foods back in. If it's super high, then we wouldn't bring that food back in, but most of the foods you can bring back in. And so um, we have people do an elimination diet, being able to um, being able to take out those top allergens, which are dairy, gluten, soy, corn, peanuts, and eggs, processed sugar and alcohol for 10 days, systematically reintroduce it, check out the elimination diet. I tell you exactly how and why to do one. Um, but a food sensitivity, we've had people intolerant to avocados. I was talking to one woman the other day and she told me that she was um, eating, that she told us that she was eating avocados because they were a fertility superfood, but they made her throw up and she was still eating them. no. <laughs> That food is not good for you. Like if you eat eat dairy and go, oh man, when I have dairy, I feel bloated or I just feel like sign, you know, your sinuses plug up. That's a clue. So if you know there's an issue with the food, just stop eating it. Not forever, but as we heal the gut, we can bring most of the foods back in. Gut infections. So I don't think many people, I've done like a lot of um, episodes on the gut the, the, the correlation between the health of their gut and your ovaries. Um, if you've got an infection in there, you can eat the cleanest, most beautiful diet in the world, but you've got, you can't, you, you've got to address that infection from a worm to a parasite to H. pylori. So lowers your stomach acid. You're passing that back and forth between you and your partner um, to bacteria infections, to fungal infections. And we're doing an anti-candida diet and just you know, anti, um, fungal, fungal infections are opportunistic. And when we starve them out with an anti-candida diet, they can go into hiding and then, um, and, and then you're just chasing the symptoms again. So there's a hierarchy to how we address these things. And, um, we see gut infections all the time. Literally we're looking at that. So basically in the, the hierarchy of things, we're looking at that, that the health of your gut to be able to address what's happening in there giving you a protocol to then um, to, to help to eradicate those infections, retesting to making sure, you know, that they're, that they're not here anymore um, afterwards. Cause you can do a protocol, second guess it, and then maybe you won't retest it and maybe it's still there. And there's, there's biofilms too, where, where you can uncover uh, more infections underneath as you start to eradicate the ones on top and more can come, come forward. And then, and then we do a short protocol to, to, um, to address those. So looking at the health of the gut is, is directly correlated to your ovaries. Um, it's really important to, to work on that and um, address those infections. Uh, the next is we have is thyroid dysfunction. Okay. So thyroid dysfunction, I've done many episodes on thyroid. So we see thyroid connected with um, AMH, FSH, your follicle count, the adrenals, done an episode on adrenal insufficiency. That then impacts the thyroid, which then impacts the ovaries. So we are always seeing something going on with thyroid with low AMH and or high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency. Even if you've been told your TSH is normal, you've got to look at the full panel, looking at antibodies. And it could be normal, but is it optimal? TSH below two, um, antibodies below 10, and then the other reference ranges on there. There's a there's a guide actually. Um, you can send me a message um, at hello at Fab Fertile, and I'll send you the thyroid guide. that has got the whole um, reference ranges for um, thyroid, so you can look at your thyroid as well. Um, but thyroid is is say co highly correlated to um, and also pregnancy loss. If you've experienced that, you need to you need to optimize the thyroid. So the thyroid is the canary in the coal mine. What is driving the thyroid off? Is it a food sensitivity? Is it a gut infection? Is it the adrenal insufficiency of the chronic stress you've been under? So managing the thyroid um, and getting it optimized is key and so overlooked with conventional medicine and people are on. And it's not about 
So it's not about getting off the thyroid medication. So if you're on thyroid medication, you already know there's an issue. So typically your REI will want to have your TSH below too. So they may have given you thyroid medication, but have they looked at the full panel on the antibodies? Probably not. Um, and then the, the doing the medication is not digging into, well, why is it off to begin with? So the medication can support it, but it's just a Band-Aid approach. You have to address the other factors of why the thyroid is off. And we regularly see the thyroid off with low AMH, high FSH, DOR, POI. The next one we have is chronic stress. So if you, and we just did one on adrenal insufficiency, if you are working more than 50 hours a week, if you, I can't tell you how many people we talk to who are going through IVF, they are working full time and they're in a graduate program. Like I know you're a type A and you get crap done, but how is that impacting your body, your physiology, your, 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 your bio, your biochemistry, your physiology, your your physio, your biochemistry, how is that impacting you? Because um, even though you you can function well, all of that stress on your body, like right now we're trying to have your baby and why is it not working? So the stress there has impacted your adrenal glands, which impacts the thyroid, which impacts the, the ovaries. So it's this whole cascade effect of, of um, you pushing yourself to, you know, too far. Maybe you've had pregnancy loss. Maybe there's been a death in the family. Maybe you've been trying for, to conceive for, for years, you've tried, you know, you've had multiple failed IVFs. You've been told donor eggs are your only option. Um, you, you know, it's a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves here. You're looking after, um, a family member that's, that's ill, or you've had a, like a death in the family. All of that piece can impact your, your adrenals. And we see it, we do testing. Sometimes you just need to see it in black and white. We do, we do testing with um, urine, looking at your, um, your cortisol over the course of 24 hours. And can we really see what's happening with it? Is it flatlined? Cause you're just burnt out. You're overwhelmed and that's impacting your sex hormones. You have no more vital reserve left. Um, is it, is it struggling? So we can see that. And then how do we start to nourish the adrenals, bring everything back online in a very targeted approach? Cause you start you know, pounding, taking all these hormones and going towards IVF and you're not even, you know, you're, you're, you're in a depleted state. That's why it's, you know, that could be a reason as to why it's not working. So working on, and then, you know, we have fertility mindset coaches that can really help you with this, especially people can feel triggered by seeing a family, by seeing a pregnant belly, by seeing a, a child, um, the, with all the gender reveals, the baby showers, all like our whole society is, is, is around celebrating, celebrating pregnancies and children and, you know, going to your place, place of worship, um, everywhere you go, you're, you're, you're impacted by this. And so it's hard to do this alone. It's really important to be able to give voice to some of these thoughts that you're, that you're dealing with. Um, our, our fertility mindset coaches are trained in heart math. So it's been used in, um, organizations and um, schools and um, hospitals for years. There's some some episodes we've done on heart math and really getting you out of that fight or flight into the parasympathetic so your body knows it's safe. safe. So chronic stress, if you identify with any of those pieces, it is really important to address that that side of things and have someone support you with it from, on, a, on, a, on a mindset piece as well as a biochemical side of things. Uh, environmental toxin overload. So, um, yeah, so we see a lot of people that are, you, so many people already taking out the plastics. Maybe you switch out your personal care and your cleaning products. Maybe you're not a hundred percent there. So this is not about perfection. It's not running to your, your, your closets and throwing it on the garbage as each product expires, then you get a non-toxic option. But is that toxic overload, the stuff that we're exposed to, I was sharing on another podcast I did here, um, where I went to Portugal in the summer and literally I, I, I didn't eat gluten, but I did have dairy and I had some dairy supplements to help like, um, uh, with, uh, digestion of that. Um, no issues. And I was having some sangria, like I was enjoying myself. Um, cause I don't do dairy, gluten or corn typically. So, um, and I didn't have corn either. Um, but I did have some dairy because, uh, <laughs> The Portuguese food with some dairy was delicious. Um, not, you know, not tons of it. And I had the, I had the digestive enzymes. Anyways, I felt totally fine. No issues. And um, came back to Montreal. Um, I live in Toronto, but we, we touched on in Montreal for a bit and had a gluten-free pizza with some dairy, with some dairy in it. Did the same thing. Had my, had my, my gluten pill to help with, with, with um, uh, digesting. And it was a gluten-free pizza with dairy, had the dairy pill. 
And le- like that later that night, my sinuses, I had a headache. I started getting some acne. It was like literally like, the body was like, I don't think so. And, you know, in North America, we just have different, our food is, you know, sprayed with glyphosate. It's just, we see this all the time. People say, how can I go to Europe? And I feel great. I just feel we're in the middle of a huge food experiment where our food is sprayed. And obviously people are like, you know, why would you spend all this money on organic? And obviously organic can be more money, but um, making sure that you're at least the dirty dozen, the top 12 foods that are most highly sprayed. You want to make sure those are organic, that the clean 15, those cannot be. So if you're looking from a cost perspective, but um, the more we support the organic, you know, the organic movement, then the more we'll, you know, get rid of those monocrops and all this, all this conventional farming. And you got the farmers like cancer and, you know, they're exposed to all these pesticides and then we're spraying it all the food and we think it's not, you know, impacting us. Well, it is. So there's, there's all sorts of um, articles and, and um, studies linked to uh, infertility and a whole host of other diseases and all, all of this, these pesticides we're exposed to. So the environmental toxin overload is real. Um, a, a first step to make sure just for you, for your, for your period to, for your, your, your menstrual pads and tampons, just make sure that you switch to a non-toxic one. The rest of it, do it on a slow, a slower basis and, and toss out um, as each one expires, you can then toss out some of those, those products. Another one we see is, over exercising and under eating. Um, we see, a, I can't tell you how many people with a low EMH and high FSH are runners. We're running five to 10 miles a week, but we feel really good when we run. And that's probably how you, you know, cope with stress. And if you're going to say, I'm like, I want you to reduce your running. You might be like, I don't think so. Or maybe you're a CrossFit person, or maybe you're just doing, um, some of this high intensity workouts, even though you may feel fine, does your body feel fine? And so we can do some of that cortisol testing. You'll see it in black and white. Maybe that is no longer serving you. So it's not about you not working out. It's just, is that too much? You know, you're going through IVF, you're working full time. Maybe you're in the graduate program and you're also over, you're, you're, you're exercising, running and doing high intensity workouts. And is that right for your body at this time as you're preparing for your baby in this beautiful um, state to be, have the baby know it's safe to come in? And that just might be too much for you. So we can see it in black and white with, you know, doing some of the testing there. We do the adrenal testing. Um, another one we see actually, and I've done a podcast episode on this, is a breast implant illness. I'm just going to throw this one out there because we see many people where, I don't know, if it's if it's, if it's it's still, you know, obviously it's still happening right now. They do like, I don't know how many, they're, they're doing more explants, people removing the, the, the um, breast implants. But um I know definitely like my, my, my daughter's 21 and her generation now they, they don't even, they don't care about that stuff. Um, but definitely breast, in, breast implants are still alive and well, people are still getting them, but you've got these, this foreign substance inside of your body. People say to me, totally healthy. I got nothing else going on, but my AMH is like below one. My FSH has gone up. I feel fine. And then anything else happened? Well, a couple of years ago, I got these breast implants, you know, not to say you need to go and take these out right away, but is that a factor that you may be dealing with? We, we do see this a lot. It is a theme and um, people having breast implants. So if that is you, it's not just, wow, you know, my health is totally fine. What, you know, what could this be? Why, why am I struggling to conceive? Are the toxins and these these foreign substances in your body are these toxins leaching into your bloodstream and causing problems with your reproductive cell um, system? So definitely uh, listen to that episode I did on um, breast implant illness. Um, it's extremely uh, I, I really like that episode because I think sometimes people think they're just chasing around these symptoms and they think they're dealing with anxiety, depression, all these mood issues, or maybe you feel nothing and it's just just right now your 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 fertility is is struggling. So um, could it be the breast implants? Maybe. Um, blood sugar dysregulation. Many episodes we've done on blood dis, um, blood sugar imbalance. So if you're on this roller coaster blood sugar, it's impacting, you know, your your sex hormones, your adrenals, putting and even and stress can impact your blood sugar. Um, sleep, sort of the chicken and the egg. Maybe you're getting poor sleep, um, waking up in the middle of the night, having a hard time falling asleep. Having a heart when you wake up, you feel um, you're not rested. 
that that blood sugar roller coaster can then impact your sex hormones. So it's a theme we regularly see with low AMH and high FSH. You've got to regulate the, the, the blood sugar either by getting a, a glucometer. You can just get that at Walgreens. You can do a continuous glucose monitor um, where you just pop that on your arm and really check to see maybe that sweet potato that you're having is spiking your blood sugar. Or maybe the fact you're having a smoothie with watermelon and pineapple and you know, a little bit of greens and some, some orange juice, maybe that's not, you know, not working for your blood sugar. So you're starting the day with this, you know, sugar laden, um, breakfast that then sends you on a whole cascade during the whole entire day. And then you're, you're not satiated and your, your, your blood sugar is all over the map. So that could be a, a clue into being able to like having more fat and protein in the morning to, to keep your blood sugar steady throughout the day is key. Uh, we touched on this one, some poor sleep, um, so if you are having poor sleep, is that to do with, with blood sugar issues? Many times people getting up in the middle of the night to pee, that could be blood sugar issues. Um, or it could be liver and, and gut too, where you're waking up between, you know, two to four. Uh, do you have an issue with your, your liver struggling? You've got a gut infection, you got a parasite, um, fall, having a hard time falling asleep. Obviously there's anxiety, but that could be you know, linked to your neurotransmitters and that's impacting your moods. Um, the poor, the sleep thing is like, we are in the middle of everyone taking all these sleep aids. Then your doctors recommended them. You may be stuck on them for years. You can't get off of them. Um, and people struggling, struggling with sleep. Many episodes I've done on sleep. That could be a reason why, you know, that you're struggling to conceive your sleep is it. You should go to bed, hit the pillow, Within you know ten to fifteen minutes, go to sleep, wake up, feel refreshed. If if your sleep is not optimal, that's impacting your sex hormones. You've got it. You've got to dig deeper. And the next one we have is digestive issues. We see a lot of people uh, alternating between constipation and diarrhea. So if you, it is normal for you to eliminate one to three times a day. So if you're like ooh one to three times a week or once every couple of days, like those toxins are circulating in your body, which impacting estrogen levels diarrhea, maybe you've had loose stools your whole life, IBS, that diagnosis that is completely unhelpful. Uh, you're chasing symptoms around, you've got diarrhea all the time. You see the people, you're struggling with this. Like that is, you're not, you're not absorbing all your nutrients, which are key for your, for your reproductive health and preparing for your baby. So if you're back and forth and you already know there's digestive issues, is there a food sensitivity? Do you have a gut infection? You know, is there bacterial overgrowth? Is the stress, stress then is, can then predispose you to um, leaky gut. So maybe you've had a lot of antibiotics in your, in your, um, in your history, a lot of antibiotic use, or you've done, um, um, high stress, you've been on the birth control pill, all that can predispose you to these gut infections. Is that what's going on? Like if you have got constipation or diarrhea and you're rushing towards IVF that, that you're like, we don't want you to throw your money away. Right. It's like, if you go to IVF, it's, it's, it's a, they, they sell it in packages because it can take three cycles. I saw somewhere it was take seven cycles for it to work. All the, all those hormones pumped in your bodies. Do you really know what that, the long-term effects of that, of, of that is? I don't know. Um, do, and, and then all the stress associated with it, the mental, emotional pressure that you put on yourself each, each time for, you know, for these cycles to work um, and putting your life on hold. Many people tell me they haven't, they've been just focusing on the IVF, haven't been able to go on vacation, haven't only been doing this, haven't even been able to see their friends because it's like cycle after cycle doing this, putting all their resources, you know, into it. And then their health, I think they put joy on hold and, and you know, basically everything will be, get better when the baby comes. We need to focus on our health now work on our, our mental, emotional side of things, work on our, our, our physical health now before the baby arrives. So we're in a really great spot because when the baby arrives, you know, that's when things get busy and we're having, you know, less sleep. And, and I've had people with like horrible postpartum periods where they weren't even able to bond with a child because they were just having such anxiety and depression because we didn't address these things beforehand. So, you know, it is not selfish to think about yourself first before you bring in your child working on yourself, you and your partner, setting up the best possible uh, foundation for your future family. When you are in, in, a, in a good state of mind, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of this, it, there, there's no si downside to you focusing in on your health. And so um, those are some of the themes that we see with, with couples that we work with. And, um, and so as I, like we said, there's a reason 
that it's not working. And we see people like cycle after cycle. And then, and then the, if they've had pregnancy loss, like all of that stuff is, is, can be trauma. And, um, the, the mental emotional strain of it is, is can take over your life. So, you know, although we've been told, you know, to trust the doctors and we need to forge forward to another IVF, it is, we think, you know, stopping is, is, you know, going to impact our health. I just see so many people that it hasn't worked. Right. So we want to focus on your health, get you in the best possible shape, you and your partner feeling, feeling great together. And then you can decide what's going to come you know, happen next. Do we, you know, obviously people get pregnant naturally, or when you go through IVF, if you had the people with like multiple rounds of, of egg retrievals, poor egg quality, everything's been horrible. The, all the, the embryos have been, have been tested and everything has failed or the, or the, or the, the embryo transfer has failed. And then they work on their health and lo and behold, they have sticky one person. She had, well, we've got, well, got lots like this, but just this one to, to share with you where she had poor a, uh, a quality prior to working with us. Um, she made all the changes, found she had non-celiac gluten sensitivity. She also had low AMH and endometriosis. Um, and she had um, adrenal insufficiency, blood sugar imbalances. She had thyroid issues, gut infections. Um, she made the changes and then on her next egg retrieval, after making these changes, her next egg retrieval, she had beautiful um, egg quality and they did a transfer. The transfer worked on the first time. And then she showed me a picture of her baby boy. So it's not that, okay, these eggs are, these. it's poor egg quality. There's nothing we can do. The, you know, the egg quality you can improve. It's the, the quantity we can't, but we can improve the, the, the quality of what's there. So, um, and then also, you know, IVF gives you a success of, of 30%, uh, the average IVF is 30%. And so it, it's like, that's, it just see so many people suffering in, in the, this sort of piece, right? If you've got someone doing 16 IVFs, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they've, they've, they've got like in a short conversation I have with people, you, you've got, you know, red flags for their health. It's just, it's, it's time to, to really stop the insanity, like the insanity of doing the same thing over and over again, especially not even changing the protocol and just keep going. Um, how is that impacting you? Like we've got to really focus in on, on you and your partner together. We coach couples. Um, so it's not about you making all the changes. He has to make the changes around, along with them. And we've seen so many people have tried for years and then no one's even looked at the man semen. And he is usually most of the guys we work with, they're open-minded. They're ready to make the changes. They're ready to do whatever it takes. He just might not know what he can do. And there's a lot he can do to optimize his health along, along with you. So, um, yeah, like we talked about, basically, um, if you're looking to get pregnant in the next three to six months, you want to focus on getting pregnant naturally. Um, and even if you are like, you know what, you, you've decided that IVF is your, your, your next step. So you're going to have, so right now we're just guessing that, you, you know, starting IVF next month is a good idea for you. We're just guessing you will have the data. You'll see if you've got a food sensitivity. Maybe you've got that infection, a gut infection, a worm, a parasite, something's in there. Um, and then the genetic piece of this, we can customize the diet and lifestyle because you can read all the books and blogs on these generalized recommendations, but are they right for you? We need to personalize it and customize it and then making sure for your blood chemistry that everything is optimal. So, and then when we have the data, you'll then be able to decide, say, okay, I'm going to start, you'll get the green light, to start, you know, start trying na um, naturally and you'll decide, okay, I, I want to reduce this protocol or I want to do this. So it's all, it's all, up to, you know, you're in the driver's seat with your team. You can look at the data, make a decision to see when IVF is right. Because right now guessing that it's going to be right next month and then going through the fact that it hasn't worked uh, because you didn't work on your health. So you'll be able to have that data to make an informed decision when IVF is the right, the right step for you. So if that feels right for you, all you need to do is go to fabfertile, fabfertile.com and go to apply here, book a call with me. We'll come up with a plan to help improve your chances of pregnancy success this year. Excited to speak with you. And um, yeah, lots to help as we prepare for pregnancy success and and hopefully some of those um, those those um, issues that we see regularly with people with low AMH and or, and or high FSH, something rang a bell for you and kind of went, oh, wait a minute, this has been missed. So it's time to take your health into your own hands. You know, you can make massive changes to your fertility when you take a target approach 
And as you say, we have an OBGYN who's trained in functional medicine, nutrition practitioners that review our testing and fertility mindset coaches, specializing in low AMH under high FSH uh, um, to be able to help improve your chances of pregnancy success. So if it feels right for you, book a call and we will chat. Take care. Bye.